Today, we're joined by a guest that's, it's fair to say that he can do it all, whether it's on a mountain bike, a road bike, cyclocross bike. I know you know this guy, Rob, and, <laughs> oh, and he's, 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 he's pretty impressive. Tell me, tell me a little bit about him because uh, this guy is pretty special. Well, he is one of a new crop of riders, a handful of riders on planet Earth that seem to be able to be the very best at any cycling discipline. As you said, with those disciplines, he's been cyclocross world champion. He's been a winner of a stage of the Tour de France, only one of the most iconic <laughs> stages of the, of, the, of the Tour de France, and the youngest to do it. And he is the reigning world and Olympic champion <laughs> of mountain bike cross country. If we don't know who it is now, you've been living under a rock. It's Tom Pidcock. <laughs> okay, Tom. Tom, welcome in. Thank you very much. That's a nice interview. Thank you. I was nervous for that one, mate. I was actually nervous having a man of your magnitude on here today. <laughs> Nice introduction, I'll just start speaking properly if you're doing the podcast, shouldn't I? So Tom, this podcast is called Just Ride, and I feel like that kind of is an embodiment of you, uh, somebody who just loves to ride their bike. Do you feel like it? that description fits you? Um, some days, yeah. <laughs> Actually, there's, there's always those days that, where it's not fun. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, like for example, now it's the end of the season, and it's, uh, you know, Ty trying to get, everything the last last bits out before before the last race but also you know and there's the and there's those days that like yesterday it was a uh, coming from snowshoe long travel day and then yesterday i did an effort day and it was just it was not happening you know so um some days don't enjoy but yeah i, I like going out and just riding yeah can you actually explain to people what it is you do, kind of explain your, your three disciplines and how your year looks? Yeah, so I, um, I compete in, you know, like you say, three disciplines at the moment. Cyclocross, which is in the winter, kind of runs from, actually starts in September and runs to the end of February. And then I don't do that, the full, that full time because obviously it's October now and I'm still racing mountain bike. Um, and then I do yeah mountain bike and, and road racing in the summer, and kind of fit in breaks and and period periodize around that. And where where does the road come in? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, you know I, I ride for a road team, so the 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 priority for them and and also me to be honest is is the road. Um, mountain bike I like for example in the spring when I do the World Cups in. Is it April? Am I right to say? I, it's it's just nice to get away from the road for a bit, and and it's kind of mountain bikes a more relaxed atmosphere, you know. It's it's where I can go and just enjoy riding, and and uh, yeah, it's just uh, bit, like you say, just ride. What do you see yourself as, though, Tom? Do you see yourself as a mountain bike rider, a cyclocross rider, or a road rider? Because obviously. To me, and I was speaking about this the other day, it's like you've been so successful, world champion cyclocross, world champion mountain bike, yet you are on this road, on this team that is sort of seen as a road team and everyone's expecting you to do massive things at the Tour de France. But really at the moment on paper, I suppose is it fair to say that the road, it almost feels like it's your weak... This is hard to say to you, <laughs> but it feels no, like no, it's no. your weakest discipline. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not that you've got a no, weak I discipline. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you I because I, I would answer that question saying that that I'm a road rider but I'm better at cross a mountain bike mm. um, I am I kind of maybe that's because like I've always raced road um, I did I came into cyclocross late, late I raced mountain bike when I was young and then stopped for a few years I have always ridden a mountain bike but then came back um yeah, what was it in 2020? Um, and, and started doing some races and World Cups and World Champs and things. And but I've always been a road rider through for all that time. So I would say I'm a road rider who's yeah does other disciplines because I'm yeah almost yeah better at them maybe. And so how did it start? Like it sounds like everything kind of started at the same time when you were younger, like. Did you start riding road and mountain bike at the same time? Um, it's a good question. I mean, 
like every year we went on holiday as a family to Morzine for two weeks on mountain bikes. Uh, oh, um, yeah, yeah, right. oh. <laughs> but but the, the funny thing is that Morzine is yeah one of the my favorite places in the world to ride. Yeah, every time I've raced there, it's gone as bad as it could possibly go. That's uh, actually how it went for me as well, actually. (laughs) It's never gone right. Never, ever. In the tour this year, I got heat stroke. Um, Oh, my God. In in the Worlds last year, I got ill the week before and then punctured in the race and then crashed because I was like, bloody... I had to take a gel after the first lap in that race because I was... I lost the key. I was at a raceway. I lost the kilo in five days before that race. No and then the year way. before that, before before Olympics, um, was just after my collarbone, and um, I crashed in practice and pulled me into costals. And then I was three kilos heavier when overnight before the race. I like puffed up like a balloon, and then I didn't finish the race because it was muddy and I was at the back. And so yeah, it's never gone well. Oh my god! I don't, I don't even remember what the original question was, but <laughs> just, just how much you love France. Yeah, right. yeah, he's just like <laughs> scarred from everything Morsi. So, I mean, the original question was kind of like how you got into it, and I feel like the that idea of like you guys traveling around as a family, I guess, like going to Morzine and did your did your mom and dad cycle as well? Yeah, yeah we we all rode. I mean, um, it was genuinely. We haven't done it in quite a few years now, but you know, when we were younger, so like me and my dad would go for a ride and then my brother would kind of go with my mum and then we would meet for lunch. And then I think um, the last time I went on holiday there was when I was first year under 23, but I went with some friends and I would train for three days on the road bike and then go downhilling on the rest day and then train for three days and then go downhilling. So it, it's- He um, is a downhiller at heart. Yeah, I, can, I see the, where this is coming from. I've always ridden um, other other bikes, um, and I think, like I always used to ride to school with my BMX through the woods. Um, yeah, so I, I've just kind of always enjoyed any bike really. But I guess road cycling, especially in the UK, is more accessible. There's more races. There's a better pathway through British cycling. Um, mm, very true. Yeah. So it's kind of the the easier way for me to go, if you like. And before we get into kind of each discipline step by step, I, uh, I kind of want to ask you about your season so far because you've, you've won world champs, you went to the Tour de France, and you won Strata Bianca. What has this season been like? Are, are you satisfied with it? Is it one of your best? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, of course it, it had some, some great results, but I think it also had its fair share of um yeah down not downs but you know, not going uh how i wanted it the tour was kind of like i had too many like goals almost like gc trying to win a stage and i came away with nothing mm. I, I learned a lot but it wasn't very enjoyable because it was kind of like yeah, I, I didn't feel like I got anything out of it that I could, you know, show for. And then, yeah, my, my shape at the start of the year was Strada. And then I went to Torino and then crashed and got concussion. And, yeah, also kind of sent me back a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, I think I think I made a, a big step this year on the road generally, um, which is, yeah, good. And then I, I managed, I won Mountain Bike World, which was my biggest goal of the year, actually. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I mean, you know, we're going to talk about the three disciplines, but one thing I think that is obvious, and especially what you said, it's the end of the year, you're you're tired, everyone's tired. Mm. You're here. You're here in North America. Mm. You made sure you're at these last two World Cup cross-country races. And that, you know, I think that says a lot about just how much you love mountain bike riding. Yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, next year, you know, I, I want... I want to go defend my title at the Olympics, but I need as many points as I can get. Um, but also I got to balance that with kind of the, the team and they, you know, need me, want me at the tour. So I have to be there my best at the tour and I have eight days between the end of the tour and the Olympics. Oh, wow. No um, way. <laughs> yeah. So 
Court. Is that even? I, that's is that kind even, of the thing. Is that even? A, is it possible? Yeah, yeah it's for yeah. you, I suppose. But I mean, you're pretty exhausted at the end of a tour, right? Yeah, Eight but, days isn't a long. Is it possible yeah. you say that, Rob? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, you did it this year. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I guess so. I guess yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Well, you did, didn't you? It was only the World Championships wasn't long after the tour, was it? Up in Scotland, really. Um, I think more it was three days. weeks this year. Yeah, so. more than eight days, to be fair. But like, yeah, that. Yeah. But you are exhausted at the end of the tour, right? I mean, is that right? You are. It's. Yeah. It's. it's it, you're beat. It's yeah. The right. Everyone's yeah. done. Um, it, I think. Yeah, doing these, these races now at the end of this year sets me up better for next year because. It means that I don't have to go to the mountain bike races in the spring, which means I have a longer prep for the tour, which means hopefully right. I should uh, come out of the tour in in a better condition and cope with the with it better. Meaning that yeah, in eight days I can be ready for mountain bike worlds. I mean it's it's gonna be yeah on the limit. It's, it's not gonna be easy, but yeah, giving myself the best chance. And so getting into the road side of things. How do you think of the tour? How do you think of Grand Tour racing? Or do you want to be, you know, a GC champion? Or is it about stage wins or these one-day races? Like, give me your thoughts on on kind of the road side of your, your life in general. Yeah, I think, you know, my characteristics are very much kind of like the the big, you know, championships, like the Worlds, I can peak. I'm very good at peaking. Um, and the Grand Tours, I think, you know, of course I want to try and win the Tour de France one day, but I think this is probably going to be the, you know, a big job for me because the, the patience side of it is, is quite difficult. You know, three weeks, what you do in the first mm. week, you can only lose the race really. And, and it all comes down to the last week and every little thing you do, like, you know, even like every day, if you take five minutes longer to have a shower on the bus and five minutes longer to make your food, you sat down for five minutes less, you know, everything catches you up with you in the third week. And I kind of get a bit impatient. You know, if we have an easy day, I'm like, oh, this is boring. Like <laughs> when, it's, when it's a flat sprint stage and I just kind of want to, oh, come on, that's grace. But actually, you know, you need to be patient and, and yeah, take, take that as a, as a blessing. Um, which I, I need to kind of get better at. Is there a, do you feel a pressure from, from Ineos Grenadiers from the team? As we said, it's like predominantly a road team and man, they've only got the world's best mountain biker on there. But do you feel a pressure from them? Are they kind of grooming you to, to take the overall in the tour to win the, you know, to win the Tour de France? Because that's, you know, that's what everyone talks about, right? Isn't it? That is, that's the, that is, that's the big story with you. Yeah. I mean, for sure there is that element and... You know, I knew that when I, you know, committed this like long term to the team. Um, but I think it, it's, you know, I also want it, but in my own way. You know, I have to tick things off that I want to achieve, which I, when I believe I can achieve, because when I know I can win something and I set my mind to it. Like, it sounds stupid, but so far in my career, I haven't not succeeded that. Um, mm. Okay, mountain bike worlds took yeah. two years, not one. But, you know, when I, I have to first believe I can do it, but I'm not ready to win the Tour de France next year yet. So, you know, it, there has to be more kind of steps before that. And and also achieving things in, in different disciplines, you know, they're also my goals and yeah, achieving them you know, makes me a, a better rider. You know, cyclocross, I became world champion. Now this winter, I'm just going to do cross in in its function to make me a better road rider for the classics. You know, I don't have to do any race, mm. but I will just do some because it's uh, around training camps and things because it's, yeah, good for me, if you like. Yeah, they all, all those disciplines sort of fit into each other. Yeah. Will we see you running a half marathon after Paris Roubaix? <laughs> yeah, <your> teammate Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw this. I saw a clip on on social media somewhere of you uh, asking Cam that. Um, no, no, you won't. I haven't even done. What I haven't done Roubaix actually yet in the elites. So uh, I need to do that first before even 
thinking about running a marathon, half marathon after. I mean, you guys do have a uh, pretty like diverse team. Like you have Cam there, you have Pauline there. You know, the only woman on the the Grenadiers. Uh, what's that like? What's the vibe like on the team? Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is also something you know, like when I'm off doing my mountain bike or my cross, it's kind of me and my my own kind of team around me. Um, like Kurt, uh, my coach Zenia, my swan year and and mechanics. So I played a different for for cross and from mountain bike, and then you then I go into the team for road races, and then you know it's like you've got six seven other teammates and we had a tour de france we've got i don't know 30 staff or whatever you know it's, it's a big big team so it's kind of very uh polar opposites if you like is it hard for you to be in a team because obviously on cyclocross and on the mountain bike it's you but in a team mm. you're a team player right on the yeah. road i mean until you're as far as i understand it until you're sort of going for the win right you're kind of riding for all of the other riders and also, I, I remember seeing you didn't like you don't you saying you don't like the tour really. Well, it must be pretty gnarly knowing that for three weeks you're going to get up and cycle sort of two hundred mile a day or two hundred k a day. Does it? And for it on, somebody else. Yeah, and for somebody else. I mean, is it on top of you a little bit when you're in the tour? No, I mean, um, the t- the tour. No, I love the tour, but it it can because it's three weeks long. If something goes wrong and you're just on this like downward trajectory it's very, yeah, yeah, very yeah. grinding whereas like last year in my first tour I won a stage and the, the the vibe was great and you know it was mint and you come to Paris and you know you have the jets flying over you and thousands of people and it's, oh and it's my mint. god <laughs> but then this year like even pa- Paris is actually the worst stage if I'm going to be completely honest because the <laughs> tour is finished you, and you have to ride for three hours an hour and a half you don't even pedal because we ride at 20k an hour and then we have to race <laughs> following the sprint teams around paris and the road is bumpy as hell you've got saddle sores your legs hurt and you can't be asked and it's uh <laughs> <laughs> yes just... that's the romantic that's the romantic view yeah, of the always, end of the tour de france i always thought about it as like man these guys are in you know in the middle of paris it's insane the crowd's wild and tom's like man Oh it is it is like that here. the first time, but then it's like, okay, I've done this before. This is not enjoyable. <laughs> so tell me actually, Tom, about winning your first Tour de France stage win. I think that that is something that all cyclists kind of, even for me on like the downhill side, like it feels like one of the pinnacles yeah. of sport. Uh, what was that like? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's massive in the moment. And, you know, after that win, I... I had two hours sleep and I was just, I was like, a did bit you wired. really? Yeah. And then I was, I was cooked for the rest of the tour. You can't have two hours sleep on the, on the Tour de France. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it, it's like you're, you're a center of attention, but for like two hours after the race and then you got, you know, you need to have a massage, right. you have dinner, you go to bed and the next day it's a new day. It's a new stage and there's a new winner. So it's like, that's it. You know, sure. it's like very, it's done. Yeah, it's done. Whereas if you win the world, you know, or the Olympics, when we take the Olympics, you know, you're on the front of the newspapers all back home and then you're, you know, people want to do interviews and, you know, you could live off it for, for a month or two if you wanted to. But the Tour de France is like, okay, right, next thing, next day, got to be ready to race again. Tom, what's the coolest podium then that you've stood on? Like, is it the Olympics? Is it like, what is the best one? Um, Yorkshire Worlds in, in 2019. When I was third in the under twenty three road race, like because Is it that good, but really, be- because I'm from Leeds in Yorkshire. <laughs> okay, because I'd three and four weeks before I crashed out of Lavenir, uh, which is the under twenty three Tour de France kind of. Um, I had concussion. I smashed my front teeth. I had three course of antibiotics, and I came back managed to race and then got on the podium and that was in Yorkshire and it was that was a, a great feeling to be honest I mean I, I still believe that if I didn't crash I could have won you know home worlds but that was all will always be a sore a sore uh, subject but still I'm proud that I got on that on that podium 
What, does anything compare to, you know, those images of you winning that stage, riding up out Duez last year, does anything compare to that? Mm. To, does anything in the moment compare to a Tour de France crowd in your face when you're leading a stage up, up one of the big mountain stages yeah, that like wild. that? Because yeah. that to me looks like there's nothing on earth that can compare to it. Mm. No, I, I've, I've had this discussion or question before and I, I don't think there is. In no other sport are fans within... 20 centimeters in your face screaming at you you can smell yeah. you can smell the beer in their breath and but, but also Alduez is is special because it's like a dead end climb and and like on Alduez there's more crowds than all the other climbs right and and it's it's like you're riding and you're kind of following the white line because that's all you can see otherwise there's people stood in front no of you why and people all beside of you and then at the last minute they stand back and you just have to kind of ride through this wave of people moving out of the way is it stressful because like is it like obviously leading a stage here is it like yeah don't hit my brake yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i mean is it because uh, to me it would be they could trip you up quite easily and it does happen yeah but it doesn't happen nearly as much as you think you know especially because half, of, half no. of them are drunk and um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it, it's actually quite impressive how like even like you know fans that don't like riders they like you would think, yeah, someone would try and knock someone off because they don't want them to win or something. You know, yeah. not, I'm not saying that you know, all any or all, all fans are like that, but uh, yeah, nothing much does happen in that in that sense, which is good because otherwise I'll put barriers and it'll all be, you know, tame and we'll be racing around motor racing yeah. circuits in oh, five no, years, won't we? Yeah. yeah, that would be an. It is. It is true, and and maybe tell us a, a bit about that descent. On that oh, same yeah, stage. Oh yeah, going around the outside oh, of that dude. Oh my, <laughs> yeah, that what, was wild. What made you turn it on? Like, what was going through your mind? Give us a picture. Um, yeah, so the idea was for me to get in the break that day, but the climb was a was a really strong headwind. So, like, basically, Jumbo were in yellow. They could decide who they wanted to go in the break because it's easy to jump on someone when they're attacking when it's a headwind because they have to work so much harder than yeah whoever's on that wheel um so yeah i was not going in the break there the the break had gone but they were riding quite hard so it was pretty close and i we'd ridden the opposite way the day before in the stage the day before so i knew it was a long descent and a long time you know that riding fast you can make up time for free like one and a half minutes is yeah, it's not like coming going across that gap on flat you can carry speed for all the corners and, and on they had like a three or four K climb halfway down the centre or something. If you risk your life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's free. Sorry, I just had <laughs> it's free. <laughs> yeah. I mean like I I think I'm quite good at judging like risk. Like I genuinely get pretty Seems that I get way. genuinely get pretty scared if I think no fuck that this could go quite wrong. But um, there, I kind of yeah was riding fast, but not on the not completely on the limit or out of control. Like I, having a motorbike in front also helps a lot when you're descending. Mm. In the and the tour, there's so many motorbikes. You know, they you can see if they go on the corner and they kind of go where you can't see in the the blind spot on the exit. And if they break, you know, you need to go slower than they were going in. Or if they don't yeah. break, and you can let it go, you know. So it it. It's, um, yeah, more factors uh, involved than just going down the descent and hoping for the but best. you hadn't pre-ridden that descent then? No. I heard you say you'd ridden up it. You hadn't, you'd, I thought, you to go down there like you did, I was like, he must have ridden this a hundred times yeah. to be quite <laughs> honest. Yeah. No way, is that right? That was yeah. it, first time, yeah. flat chat. Yeah. Struth. Well, it's, it's what a lot of descents are like in the tour. I mean... Okay, you go to the same mountains when you when you experience you've done a few tours or recons or raced for you know you you would get to know mountains and descents a, a bit I guess but yeah yeah you kind of a lot of things that you have to just kind of yeah it is it is what it is you Wing know? It. yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah go for it yeah go sure. for it did you think that that was gonna go go viral like it did um. The, that's that's also the thing with a tour because they've got so many cameras and motorbikes if something does happen it's like always on tv so 
you know, yeah. I was thinking, you know, this is on TV and you make it the end for the books, you know, just send it down here a bit. I mean, yeah, it, there's no doubt, is there, the tour is the, it is the pinnacle in it really of cycling events globally. I mean, you said it is an aim of yours to win it. Is there a time frame on that, Tom? Is it something you like? You said, it sounds like you're very calculated in your approach to it. Will it be in the next five years or a little you know have you got any idea sort of when you'll be ready when you'll go for it i I don't know to be honest that's that's time time will tell but i think um you know it's only only recently that it is kind of there are these outliers that you know normally through me was like Mm. 30 g was 30 ish and i don't know how exactly i'm up that's true yeah right but and now there's tade who won it when he was 21 and 22 uh remco won the vuelta when he was I don't know, 21, 22 or something. Um, and then, yeah, Jonas is 26 or 27 or something. So, you know, they, they're younger than... But in general, you know, if you look at it, how how it's been in, in the past, people are older when they win the tour. Yeah, you're still well within your peak performance years, isn't it? That's fair to say. Well, right? I'd hope so, yeah. Well, that's not planned. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think you've got a bit left yet, Tom. You take it from me. <laughs> We've never been this cheeky with an Olympic champion. <laughs> so, so, Tom, uh, talking about cyclocross, I've uh, I've always felt it's like the gnarliest discipline. It's super cold. It's muddy. You're like dead of winter. Yeah. Uh, how do you think about it? I I agree with you. I did, well, I came to the con- <laughs> I came to the conclusion last year that it's the hardest discipline, because really because okay, the race is only an hour, but it's a whole day. You know, most of the races are in Belgium. You wake up, you drive to the race, you do a recon, you have your lunch, you warm up, but then the weather's cold. The you have to be fully switched on 100 percent because it's like a mountain race you start full gas so if you're not mm. if you're not switched on you know straight away and you, you can have a hard hour so mentally it's super hard because you've got to warm up super hard and you got and then you know be on it for the race and the intensity of it and every, all these things like a road race we set off in the neutral zone and we're just freewheeling for 10 minutes and then you can sit in the bunch, the break goes, and you can just chill out until you don't feel good. You've got three or four hours to make yourself feel good to race the final. But in cyclocross, it's like, man, oh. you're straight into it. A mountain bike is similar, but easier. It's warmer, the race is longer. The efforts are a bit longer as well because the descents are longer and the climbs are longer, so it's less intense. So, yeah, I was going to, yeah, so there is a big difference from your point of view as a physical effort then between mountain biking and cyclocross because mm. in my mind I'm like well they basically sprint for an hour in cyclocross yeah. an hour and quarter in mountain biking why haven't all the cyclocross riders come over and started whooping it you know yeah yeah I think it, it's also different technically as well I think you know that's for sure yeah cyclocross is not rocks and you don't have to it's, it's, it's a different technique um cross is kind of more balance in ruts and mud on corners whereas mountain bike you know you gotta change your weight more up and up and down on the bike whereas cross you kind of more side to side i don't know i'll just come up with that right now but <laughs> <laughs> sounded good <laughs> i was like ah yeah of course of course I mean, it's it's interesting that we saw uh, Puck Peters say like come over from cross and win the the world cup overall yeah yeah, she's she's super skillful. I mean, she's she thinks she was one of the first women at the yeah the head of the cross field to hop the barriers. I think. Um, oh wow! So, Is that right? Oh no way! I think so. Yeah, there yeah. The, the, the was there was um, yeah elite riders before her hopping, but I don't think um, yeah she's she's won world world cups and and the like in, in cross. I think she was one of the first. Along with Fem Van Empel. I think they're the two, they're the two mm-hmm. they were fighting each other a lot this season for, for wins. So it is. What, what, talking about talking about competitors, what's like, what's Matthew Van Der Poel like mm. as a competitor? Yeah. What's Woot Van Aert like? I mean, you're the big three on the cycle across. Whenever you three are riding, I'm watching the cycle across. <laughs> yeah. like, there is not, I yeah. am not, I ain't missing that. It's as good as anything you're ever going to see. Yeah, I, I mean, I think 
they're animals like yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know they're they're um, fierce competitors. You know they they both want to turn up to every cross race and and want to win. Um, you know which of course I do, but you know I, like I pick and choose a bit more about the actual ones I go all in for because every weekend two races it, it's it's hard and mentally to to psych yourself up 100 percent for for every race like i said earlier i'm good at peaking for the race you know the three races in a year mm. or four um but you know every weekend just maintaining a, a level there i think that's also what makes them so good at cross riders in general are all every like they're so consistent i think that that also mm. what makes them makes them so good on the road as well and it and it does it feels to me like you you know like like you said earlier it's the hardest discipline like if you can succeed at cross i couldn't help but think back to that world championship was it in in the netherlands a couple of years ago where you came down off that bridge onto the beach at about 40 mile an hour and hit those ruts but they looked like they were frozen it was oh, so yeah. it yeah. was just the gnarliest thing i'd ever seen actually when you take everything into account the bike drop handlebars yeah. it's minus five <laughs> you know what i mean it was, it's just madness I, yeah and then you're in the tour going up you know the alps in 35 degree <laughs> heat. It's, it's wild but if you can do it there then i guess you can do it anywhere yeah that 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 uh, bridge and that stand was yeah horrible. I'm sh- I'm crap in the stand. Pretty wild so, one. Eh? <laughs> I don't think my weight comes into to uh, my advantage either. When you're coming down a you're on a bridge at five mile, you have to carry your speed to to the to the sea to get a yeah get on the hard hard sand. I was like struggling to get there every lap. <laughs> yeah, it looked hard. <laughs> Tom, is there like a cultural difference? Like, a, it feels like cross is uh, in between road and mountain bike. Like, what's the culture like? Um, if you were to think about all three, is like cyclocross in the middle of the two? Um, yeah, I would say so. Actually, I think it's only maybe in the middle because the weather's cold, so people that go around and chat, you know, you know, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whereas in you know mountain bike, you, you can just kind of spend a bit more time and a bit more, yeah, just t- talking to people and catching up. But in cross, and as well, like in cross, each kind of so in like the teams, each rider has their camp run and their own, you know, pit crew, and they kind of do it like uh, in their own hub. Like okay, all the campers mm-hmm. from Telenet say they all part together, but then they all have their own set little team. So it's a team within the teams and um so it's different in in to to mountain bike in that way i think but it's also not serious as the road so yeah it's in in between like you say i guess i feel like tom like you probably you've heard it more than anyone ever about specializing like people or i guess ask you that like do people say man tom if you specialize in one discipline you would just smoke everyone things like that i i think my opinions changing on this i said yeah maybe i need to specialize more if i want to win the tour but the thing is what when you get the best out of me is when i'm happy and i'm enjoying it and things keeping things fresh but if i was just on the road and i did training camps a year like yeah you would get the best out of me for a few months but then i'd get sick of it and i'd need to do something else that's why i drop in the mountain bike in the summer because it's Man, like the short track last week in in on um, in snowshoe, like my since the worlds I had a break, then I had an infection. It's not been ideal, so my top end is not there. Man, the the shape you can get from a twenty minute race is insane. Like it, it's <laughs> the, 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 when you're fit, is it doesn't feel bad, but when you're suffering, like you cannot hurt yourself that much in training. So <laughs> is that right? Like, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's like the 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 importance of it is is what well, to me is pretty. Yeah, I need I need different stuff to do, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Well, it's quite nice. It sounds like you know that you'd get bored basically mm-hmm. with one discipline, but they all feed into each other enough, and you can kind of play with them, and you know, be this brilliant all rounder that you are. Yeah, it's mad. But I can see it. I can totally see yeah. it. Yeah. 
Tom, switching gears to the mountain bike side, uh, maybe tell us, uh, tell us where you are and, and what we're up to this weekend. So it's Thursday tomorrow and we're in Canada. Tomorrow we have the short track race and, and then Sunday got the last round of the World Cup in Mont St. Anne. Um, it's also my last race of the year. And um, I heard you're about 50 Ks away from where we are. You uh, didn't want to make the trip over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I was there this morning, but I, I needed... Um, you were here place, this morning! <laughs> I needed a place to uh, have a shower and stuff. I'm not going to sit in my, my sweaty chamois for an hour. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you off. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, okay. You better win, actually. But uh, <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about Snowshoe last week. I don't think I've ever seen a race where, where somebody gets a flat twice in the same lap, was it? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Um, Two fronts, <laughs> wasn't it? Two front yeah, flats, right? Which is, yeah, yeah. Ugh. So the, 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 the first one was quite innocuous. It was just something like a little some slabs of rock over this river when we change off the fire road into the single track after the steep climb you go right on the fire road down and then you go like left into a little bit in the single track and then back on the fire road and it's like slabs of rock but one was coming loose they had like an edge on it and i just clipped it and it just blew out my sidewall so it's just kind of a, then a stupid thing it's just when i have tax you know you're going just that little bit faster that mm. 3k an hour faster and and then you and then the second one, I don't even know. Like I was pushing hard because I was I was like angry then, and yeah, I just got a little flap before I came around to the pits again. So. And so, what do you? Uh, I guess coming into the end of the season, have you ever thought about going for like a World Cup overall? Um, is that something that you are interested in at all? Um, to be honest, I don't really. Like, I, I have no aspiration for any World Cup overalls. Like, the race is the world champs, you know, the best on the day. Mm. They're the best in the world. Mm. But the overall is kind of like who's been lucky and who's not got ill. And Interesting. Like, and, and also because I, I'm i never going to be able to do all the World Cups. I'm never going to be able to compete for the, for the overall. So that's also probably why I have not really much interest in it. You would never see yourself coming over full time to mountain biking, then. And, and am I right in thinking that you've said it's your favourite, like or the more, most fun for you out of all the disciplines you do? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, not not anytime soon. Maybe like the back end of my career, when when yeah. you know I would I would come and uh... when you've won the tour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. No, I mean. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to rule that out. I'd certainly enjoy doing that. Do you have any favorite moments that you look back on in your mountain bike career? Um, I mean, I always enjoy Nova Mesta being my favorite track. I think Mont Saint Anne might be my second favorite now. It's a pretty good track. Is it? Is it your first time here, Tom? Is it yeah. racing? Is it? Yeah, you said. Yeah, I've done four laps. Yeah, this is this is one of the classics, right? This is yeah. a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> um. I think, yeah, I guess, I guess I always, in, yeah, I always enjoy going to Nova Mesto. The Olympics, obviously, I think is the, is the main highlight though. Um, Rob and I were, Rob and I were talking about this before. I actually saw you hanging out at the bottom of the downhill track. Yeah. And we were, we were talking about if we might see you on a downhill World Cup starting line. You think you could do it? <laughs> I think I think you would depend on the track. So, uh, <laughs> Wait, so which one would you ride? Which one would you ride? Um, I actually kind of think snowshoe would be a good really? one for me. Oh my God. Well, oh, I, it's pretty wild. Okay, well, you two probably know better. You two know better than me, but it's not that steep. And okay, there's some technical bits you have to. I guess you have to send it through the rocks. But it's natural stuff that you'd probably be good at, to be fair, it, yeah. like you say. But it's I'd say that snowshoe is high risk because mm. you've got to enter those rock sections basically arms out, straight, eyes shut. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> wild. Well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to ask you two a question then. Which, do, which track do you, would you think would be best for me? Oh. 
I, man, you know what's funny is uh, I feel like here in Mount St. Anne, after, you see, after seeing you do that downhill going like 100K, yeah, I feel like yeah, uh, but that's what's scary this is to like me. one of the faster ones. Like, oh. like Andorra, Andorra mm. is like the jumps, okay, I could, I could do once I've done them. But the, the speed you come down that chute, like I rode across it the other week and that's steep, but that's scary. I prefer to be going slower. Then, then mm. I can. Have you have you spent any time on a downhill bike? Is there any Pinarello going to make a downhill bike? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, have you have you ever ridden one really in anger? Uh, in anger, uh, you know, I went downhilling with Greg. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but I would. I practiced, <laughs> Greg Minaur, yeah. I practiced the the black run in Andorra, and and I dropped him. He hadn't practiced it. <laughs> oh, we got the exclusive. We got the exclusive. I Minar mean, no, can't keep up with Tom Pitcock off road on a mountain bike. Down. I love it. I we believe got it. it. We got I it. I, it. I, I think he had like a. He's, he had his wrist was still broken or something as well. But you know, you don't need to tell that part. <laughs> that doesn't matter. That don't matter. That don't matter. That yeah, that part actually doesn't matter. <laughs> hey Tom, of all the people you ride against, you know, like in in cyclocross, you got like. Um, Woot Van Aert, Van Der Poel on the road, Vinegard, you know, mm. and all these, all these riders you go up against. And then you came into mountain bike and you go up against someone like Nino Schert. What mm. sort of competitor is he? You know, he's a 10-time world champion going for his ninth overall. I'd imagine even you can respect who he is in this sport. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, he, he's the, the icon of our sport. Yesterday, so we're staying, there's like a little bike park near us, down here in the, where we're staying. And I was... I went there yesterday for training and there was like an instructor with, with some people and I rode past and he shouted, go on, Nino. Like, I was wearing the World, world Champs <laughs> jersey, you know? So that, I think that that shows, that shows who he is, you know? He, he's, yeah. he's, the, he's the world champion of, of like CEO. One of the questions I've always thought about is like, which discipline has is at the highest level, would you say? Like, you know, who, I don't, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah um, like for sure road. I mean, because mm. there's there's more competitors in road, but the main thing is there's more money. And where there's more money, there's more pressure. There's, mm. And where there's more pressure, there's, there's yeah, more, yeah, more pressure to perform. So there's more people back in that. There's, it, 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 you know, it goes on. If there's more money, there's more risk, more everything is at, is at stake, and uh, you know you can win more, you can lose more. It's um, so yeah, I think that 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 makes it the the highest level for sure. It's the pinnacle, and it? it is yeah. The road, like you say, it's probably got the biggest base to the pyramid, and it. There's more people going at the road yeah. than anything else, which is yeah. interesting to hear. Cause but but, but, but it's saying that in a mountain bike bubble, yeah, it, it's. Yeah, like you say, the the base of the pyramid is bigger, but you know that right. doesn't that doesn't mean that the the level is not good in mountain bike or cross. You know, they're still the best guys in the world. But the yeah, it, it's it is just kind of the the pyramid is bigger. The the yeah the the pressure and the money at the top means it it it, it they have to find the best and get get the max out of out of everybody. And I think, um, you know, in mountain bike, you know, you, everyone still trains super hard. But there is, if they don't win, it's not the end of the world, you know. But a team goes to the Tour de France, mm. you know, it's not a success unless they win a stage because the sponsors need a stage winning the Tour de France. You know, we need to win the Tour de France. It, it's the, the, the manufacturers in mountain bike, their brands still get represented, you know. Um, yeah, I, it's kind of hard to explain, but yeah. Why would why do you normally ride mountain bike in the Olympics and instead of road? Um, yeah, last year I went all in for the for the mountain bike, but I think not last year, last time. Next year though, I'm going to do mountain bike and road. What's the track like? Did you did you go to the test event in Paris? Did you see the yeah. the lap or not? It's, yeah, it's quite controversial, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I I wasn't so impressed to be honest. I mean, they've just kind of graveled over. Yolanda wasn't actually. <laughs> they just graveled over a, yeah, a hill, and it's big gravel, slippy. It's they they could have made a, 
a more exciting track because there is a hill there and there is they could have made some nice natural features but i think they're scared it's going to rain but you know the race is in bloody uh, august in it right. so you know the, the most rainy month of the year <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> if, if we were saying if i said to you now take away all like the professional earning side of it and all that what give up two disciplines oh, which one question. would you be left with um just based on one what, what i enjoy yeah yeah exactly that yeah 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 mountain bike probably mm. would it really yeah would it really yeah I yeah you know, I I mean I I don't really watch road races. I watch I don't really watch cross actually to be honest, but I watch every mountain bike race, every downhill World cup. So is that right, honestly? Yeah, and he watches all the downhills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Tom, you know, kind of like wrapping up. It's it's so funny. We've been we've been talking all this time. You do all three of these disciplines at such a high level. Do you ever want an off season? Like it feels like you're racing all year long. Yeah, I mean, I kind of have, I enjoy having more short breaks in a year, like five days, seven days, than having like three or four weeks off at the end of the year. Because then you come back, yeah. you, you're you not unfit, you haven't put on much weight, and it's much easier just to get back into it. And then you can have like four or five one-week breaks. And I think this year I had one in January, one in April, one after... So I have four kind of one week. Uh, this one will be a bit longer, you know. So I have four breaks instead of one or two, whereas a normal road rider or somebody who just does one season would have. And I kind of in, enjoy that more. Yeah, it's it's super super interesting because like I feel like so many people have talked about how you hear so much, I guess, from from amateurs about the peaks and saying like, oh, I can only train this much. I have to do this many blocks, but. Um, do you feel like that is true? Uh, like people put too much emphasis on, on maybe the training side of it. Um, but you can never over, over emphasize training. I think it's the, you know, training, rest, nutrition is all the most important for, yeah, performing, isn't it? But I think, you you have to think about, some an athlete's head as well. I guess you know and what they how how you how you can get the best out of that individual well you say yeah you do all three it keeps you happy i don't think you get you don't see that many unhappy athletes yeah at the top do you i mean you've got to be doing what you love otherwise you can't force these you can't mm. force it not at the level you're at anyway yeah, yeah. yeah exactly you, you've got to be able to enjoy yeah. enjoy working hard and enjoy you know you've got to see the see the results from it i think yeah, that that's like success breeds success, then it you know, you get you, you, you win something and you're hungry for to try and win again. And I'd imagine you're pretty hungry to win this weekend after snowshoe last weekend. Some of the legs were there, weren't they? It was just a just a bit of lack of air in that front tire. Yeah, yeah, I was feeling a bit deflated. <laughs> <laughs> No one left in feet. <laughs> <deep lying. laughs> so Tom, maybe uh, last question is, um, what does a perfect day of riding look like for Tom Pidcock? Uh, you know, if you're just going out for fun, and you know, where where would you be? Um, where would you go? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the perfect days were. Days of riding where I was uh, in lockdown in in Leeds. We're not spending that that summer with my parents. That was. Uh, no traffic. <laughs> no traffic, but I would like, you know, go out and do 200k on my road bike. And then the next like day, do. next day, do six hours on my mountain bike. Bike. It was, it was mint, you know, spend all day riding, come back, have a barbecue. And yeah, it was, that was, uh, that was mint summer that was. No training wow. plan, nothing, just go out and ride and do as long as. And the weather's mint. for six hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention you at e-bike world champion as well at one point, yes. but I think we'll just leave that there. <laughs> the first thing when you don't have a plan, you know, you can just set you set your own challenges. Like, you know, I wanted to ride on the right. mountain bike through Otley, Ilkley, and and then round the reservoirs, and then it took me six hours. So you know, mm. yeah. and you loved every minute of it. I bet. Yeah, it was it was good because you know, just uh, yeah. spending the whole day in the sun. In lockdown, no one's around, Beautiful. apart from some weird people That's walking right. in the yeah, in the is. middle of nowhere with masks on. But 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was an amazing time, though. You're right. And yeah. I think not just like, yeah, the whole of the UK, probably the whole of the planet really got back into it. So cycling just boomed, didn't it? It was mad, yeah. yeah. Well, Tom, it's been been a pleasure. Super, super cool to, yes, to learn you. more about what you do and be more impressed than I came into this conversation, actually, which is crazy. We might bump into you here in the flesh with any luck in Monson uh, yeah, as well. Yeah. That's true. Well, I'll, I'll, come, I'll come find you tomorrow. Pleasure to meet you both. Thank you, Tom. Thanks very much, Tom. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, guys.